folks uh, again I'm going to apologize for the delay between videos uh, it has been a crazy couple of months I have been building a new recording studio um, you can see some of it behind me um, there's also a bit of a live room with a drum room etc outside and I've had my first band in the last couple of weeks recording uh, 11 tracks for an album they're called Damage I will put links in the description to them I'm going to use a little bit of their guitar recordings uh, for this video today um, as you can hear I'm a bit stuffed with a cold because the lads came all the way from Scotland and uh, gave me their illnesses <laughs> as we say but anyway it all went really well um, I must say I'm going to comment a little bit on the lads that they came over with and they gave me some, some pre-production stuff that they sent ahead of time with all of their tempo maps and everything included, keys, everything. I knew everything that I needed to know before they even arrived, you know, and that's that's what I like. That's called well-prepared band. They all knew what they were doing, so there was no, no messing about. So it was great. So uh, what I want to talk to you about today is um, it's kind of a new thing in Reaper from about uh, version 5.3 I think I picked up on it but I, I recently saw I can't take credit for what I'm going to talk to you about I saw Kenny Joya talking about this and I thought wow and it just really blew my mind and it's spectral repair in Reaper now up until now I've been using Isotope RX to fix any noise issues or get rid of any little artifacts etc in sound files I don't need to upgrade that anymore I've just realized because I can do it now do it in Reaper now I'm going to play a little bit of audio here it's kind of subtle in this but there are other tracks where there's this the guitar squeak is much worse what happened was we changed the strings on the guitar the same day we were recording and of course that caused some squeaking every time we slid up the strings etc so um, there is a little bit in this section. I'm only going to play you a little bit of the guitars. I haven't mixed any of these tracks yet. These, was, these were just recorded last week. Um, but they've given me permission to use the tracks to do whatever I want with on YouTube. So it's all good. Um, so I just want to play you this little bit and you'll hear the little guitar squeaks. Then we'll get into how we can fix this in Reaper. <laughs> Okay, you heard two or three of them there. Uh, they're not major in this bit, but there are parts of this song and other songs where they really jump out uh, at you when you're listening. So I'm going to use this little bit because I'm, I'm just in here now, so I thought I'd quickly do it. So what you can do is you can go up to Options, uh, go to Peaks Display Mode, and you can see Show Spectrogram or show spectral peaks there's all these different kind of versions of this um, or you can select a specific item or two right click and show you go to spectral edits and show spectrogram okay so we'll hit on that for the moment now as you can see, we now have a spectral reference of our tracks. We've no longer got wave files, we've now got the spectrogram of these files. Okay, so if we go back and let's just play this again. Now there's one of the squeaks is in here somewhere. Let's zoom in and see why and what's causing it. Now you can see in here these extra green specks. <laughs> It's very subtle with these because they are fairly subtle little um, nuances. But um, let's switch off the... Okay, and let's highlight this little section here. Now you can see it a bit clearer. This is the uh, condenser mic at the bottom here. Now you can see these green speckles here much clearer here. They're much darker. These are showing these frequencies that are jumping out in this section. So what we can do is if we click on there and we right click again go to spectral edits and we can add a spectral edit to item. 
Okay, so it's just going to this item. So what we'll do is I'll unmute. Uh, I'll just solo the one we're looking at here. So let's give it a listen. You can hear that. Okay, it's got that squeak to it. So what we can do is we grab. This is basically an item here. You've got the bar here where you can select it. I can drag it up and down to concentrate on whatever frequencies it is I want to concentrate on. Say for example it was an S up here somewhere in these high up in the spectrums but as it is it's these green little sections here so let's bring it down and I'm just going to concentrate in on them. Now I'm going to leave a little bit either side reason being these two buttons here, these two knobs, give me a fade in and a fade out on the top and the bottom. If I totally take out the problem, right, this is where we started. So I can now fade in and out from the top and the bottom using this one. So there's a fade, or that kind of cross fade there. And same thing from either side. Okay. Now these two here, uh, give me compression and gain. So you can do all sorts with this. It's, it's really in-depth. So I, I just want to show you a little basic video of my discovery of this and how much it's going to help me editing these guitars. So that's way too much. So if we bring it out again, let's double click to take it back. And we're just going to take it down a little bit. Now you can see these green sections have gone now. Okay, so if we go back a bit and let's play it. Just toggle the auto follow. Okay, now you, as you can hear there, there wasn't that squeak. It is a little bit of an artifact, so let's just bring it up a bit too. This is probably a little bit too much. Okay, take it down a bit and bring in the fades again. Adjust with them. Now, compared to this, and then when you end up with this, what a difference. Now, this may not seem like a big deal <laughs> to a lot of people. To me, this is a revelation because it's going to change the way I work. Now, what you can also do with this, if, if we select this edited item, say you've got the same thing uh, like we have... Po I keep pointing, so <laughs> I'm so used to having a band in here and pointing physically at things. Um, say, for example, we've got the same problem just a little bit further down the road here. There's one there. Uh, where was it now? There. This section here, you can see there's another problem. So what we can do, go, do is go back to what we've just done. If we hit Control or Command, Control on PC, Command on a Mac, get that center bar of this, um, um, I don't know what you'd call it, this edit and pull it out, it's the same as copying an item. So we can copy it along and place it at our next problem point, uh, which was... Uh, who knows, let's have a listen. So if we listen through it... There it is, it's up here. And you can just kind of see all these green highlighted bits. So if we go back a bit and we grab our, our edit, bring it up here and just plonk it over the top and then we can listen from the first one which is here. That's a bit too much on that one. So if we but also what we can do is have a look at do we really need as much of this and the length of it. Uh, it should probably about there somewhere. Just take it out a bit more. And then play again. So there you have it. I mean, a wonderful, wonderful way of editing uh, your files. I mean, this, it, it, there's a lot more depth than this. Um, there's a lot more that you can do with this. I would advise looking up Kenny Joyer's video on the Spectral Edits. Um, fantastic. Um, this is going to save me so much time with these guitars because I've got to 
get rid of a lot of squeaks that are going on so spot on to the reaper guys and there you have it another magical piece of uh, magic within reaper what can I say it's really going to help a lot of people out so there you have it guys hope that helps hope it's useful see you in the next one cheers now bye